Welcome back everybody. This video we're going to be talking about what an inverter is, do you need one, and how I end up installing one in our Casita Heritage Deluxe. First I want to talk about these, these different types of outlets. The one on the left I'll refer to as the 12 volt outlet. Um, some people call that the cigarette lighter um, or 12 volt socket and then there's your, your USB sockets. The one on the right I will call your household outlet. Now let's talk about the three power systems on a Casita. The first one is your 12 volt battery, which powers those items listed here, including that car outlet or USB ports that I just talked about. Second is propane. Propane provides power to the furnace and the fridge and the water heater um, and the range cooktop. But the first three actually also need some battery power to function correctly to run fans and other uh, digital components within them. And finally, we have our 120 volt shore power, which powers that household outlet I just showed you, as well as the air conditioner. Also runs the converter. The converter is what actually charges the battery when you are connected to shore power. So what exactly is an inverter? An inverter uses your battery system to provide power to the devices that usually require shore power. So if you are a camper that only connects to shore power every single time you camp, then you probably don't need an inverter. But if you are one that maybe sometimes doesn't connect to shore power and still wants to run app devices that require shore power, then you should look into getting an inverter. Now that we know we can use our inverter to run, say, our laptops or a coffee maker or a microwave or maybe even the air conditioner, let's talk about the practicalities of using these devices in a casita. First of all, an inverter is going to require a lot more power than you're used to. For instance, if I try to run the air conditioner through an inverter for 30 minutes, the standard battery that comes with a casita probably could not even accomplish this, and even if it could, it would be depleted in that amount of time. Inverters come in different capacities, usually measured in wattage, of the maximum amount of loads that the inverter will run. So some people may get by with an easy small inverter that is maybe only a few hundred watts to run their laptop computer. But if you want to run an air conditioner, if you want to run a coffee maker, if you want to run a hair dryer, microwave, these things will require a much larger inverter and thus will take a much larger drain on your battery system. So then the next part is you need to have a good battery system. You have to have significant batteries and probably a way to recharge those batteries which is typically solar. Basically if you plan on trying to run your, in, your air conditioner all day through an inverter that's an unrealistic expectation. I'm expected to run mine maybe 30 minutes a day Giving, given that would actually reduce my battery by about 25%, and I should be able to recover that with good, good sun through my solar in one day. The Casita simply does not have enough space to store enough batteries and enough rooftop area to store enough solar panels to charge those batteries in order to have a system that could support running the air conditioner for extended periods of time. There are different types of inverters you could install, from a small one down that connects just to a cigarette lighter connection or ones you hardwire into your trailer. Some that hardwire just provide a household outlet on them themselves, so anything that you need to use, you plug directly into that. But I wanted to make this easy and wanted to wire it directly into all of the outlets and all of these systems built into the Casita. I was only looking at pure sine wave inverters, so I chose the Xantrex Freedom XC2000 for the following three reasons. One, the 2000 watts this one supports is enough capacity to run pretty much everything in a Casita, including the air conditioner, for a limited period of time. Second, it has a built-in transfer switch. So one of the, what that means is when I connect to shore power, it will automatically transfer from using the inverter to power the, uh, the trailer to using the shore power. 
or if I lose shore power, it can actually turn on the inverter to, to supply that power. What you don't want is to connect your inverter to your Casita uh, 120 volt power system and also connect shore power to that same thing. That will fry your inverter. Lastly, the Xantrex has a built-in charger. So why is that important? Well, if I just wired it directly to the 120 volt system and my built-in converter will actually try to charge my batteries whenever my inverter's on, but that's kind of like this inefficient charging loop where the inverter's using batteries to charge my batteries. It's not a good situation. So you need a way to know when you're either you're on shore power or not and to only have the converter running when you're on shore power. Well, the Xantrex does that automatically for you. It detects that and will charge your batteries only when connected to shore power. An amazing thing is actually charge your batteries up to 80 amps if you want to. Firstly, you want your inverter really close to your batteries. For me, my battery is underneath my side bench. I had some empty space kind of near where the tire well is and kind of above the batteries, which was just some dead space I couldn't use for anything. So I, one thing the Xantrex allows is a upside down install. So I was able to install it you know, upside down in the bench right above the batteries. I used some steel braces to keep the fiberglass from cracking while holding up the 16 pound inverter. I removed where the 30 amp shore power plug from the power station unit was connected and connected the inverter output in its place. I then installed a new 30 amp circuit breaker behind the power station unit between the shore power plug and the inverter input. I then installed the remote panel above the closet door and moved my battery monitor and propane monitor so I have a single place to monitor all of my systems. Lastly, in order to provide the power from my batteries to the invert that the inverter requires, I needed to upgrade my battery wiring. I was running, I think like four or six gauge wires, and I went up to four opt or four zero gauge wires. Um, I also decided to move my battery disconnect from that red key in the hallway that I was always kicking to a disconnect that's closer to the batteries and behind um, underneath the bench so it's out of the way but still easily to get to and also I knew this battery disconnect could handle potentially the 200 amps required by this inverter. This concludes my inverter install. Thanks for watching.